Lesson, I just want to do some what I would call active listening. Uh, this isn't going to be so much of a lesson of like go home and you know practice this or that. It's going to be more just listen and consider what's being played in, in music because active listening is a huge part of, of practicing. Um, I, uh, I also want to point out that um, in the demonstration clip that I just played. Um, I played two choruses, and on the first chorus, I tried to play what's called behind the beat, which means I was, uh, I guess you could say, slightly, you know, dragging, like playing kind of like laid back. And then in the second chorus, when I start extending the harmony and sort of the, the inter intervals and the lines, I started to play more on top and uh, push it and drive it a little bit. And um, you want your goal ultimately, and my goal is to really try to play like all the feels. Um, the pianist Fred Hirsch, he said, he said like the most profound thing about time in jazz. He said at any given time, there are ten to fifteen styles of time within the jazz idiom, and I really agree with that. So I'm trying to spend a lot of time like listening and and like copying that and trying to see how I can you know implement it into my playing, you know. Um, so that's just like the main point of the whole lesson, really. Um, now, I mean, the first tip I can obviously give you is when you're practicing, if you want to do like a swing thing, put the metronome on two and four, and that's going to simulate the hi-hat, okay? And that's for the swing feel. And I can also tell you if you're going to play a straight eighth note thing, um, you want to put it on one, two, three, four, or one and three, you know, depending on the tempo and, and, and what you're working on. That's going to give you, um, you know, for like a Latin style on things like that, that's probably, the one and three is probably the best way to practice. Now, I can tell you all that, and those are good tips, but if you don't transcribe, it's like you're really only going to get so far, you know. Okay, so let's move on to some listening now. And um, let's listen to who I would consider to be the master of playing behind the beat. And that would be, of course, Dexter Gordon. So let's just take um, a listen to a little excerpt from one of his solos. <laughs> Alright, so the next clip I want to show you is an excerpt from a record done by a New York guitar player named Mark Elf. And I think that this is an example of playing as far ahead of the beat as humanly possible without the whole thing falling apart. So listen to the way um, what he's playing interacts with the drums specifically. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've taken a look at the uh, extremes, let's take a look at a player who's actually shifted their style throughout their career in terms of how they emphasize the beat, and that would be Pat Martino. The first clip I'm going to show you is uh, from a record he did when he was really young, and he tends to play more laid back. And uh, I'm going to show you a, a recording that's more modern, where he's definitely playing much more on top. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've talked about different ways of approaching the beat, let's talk about what does and does not constitute a line of swing eighth notes. Um, oftentimes, I'll hear uh, people do things like this. Okay, so there's three common faux pas that go along with uh, the style that I just played. Like, right off the bat, you can hear that it's more of a dotted eighth note thing rather than playing off the triplet feel. Uh, number two, 
a lot of times people who play like that will reverse the order of uh, long to short and make the notes short to long in terms of uh, holding the duration of the notes. And then I'm not, I'm not sure if I did it right there, but um, <clears throat> a lot of times people will sort of misplace their accents um, within the line. So now I'm going to give you the definition of a swing eighth note feel. Um, and this definition really comes from a, a style of music that's sort of pre-bebop, but um, it applies to all forms of jazz, I believe. Um, and it's really just the idea of superimposing 12-8 over a bar 4-4. So what do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> we want to play off the triplet instead of the dotted eighth note thing, which plays off of... Uh, kind of like more group, uh, four groupings of 16th notes. Uh, meaning this, the first note is going to be long, and the second one's going to be short in the line. So the, uh, if we have a bar at 12-8, we have four groupings of triplets. And on each of these triplets, if we're going to split them up into an eighth note line, um, within each grouping, we're going to have to play the first note through the first two triplets, and the second note hitting the last triplet in that grouping. Now, if this uh, sounds confusing, I'll put a little thing on my blog that'll give you a visual aid to this. But let's look at it in a musical context for a second. I just I just thought of this. This is a great example of uh, swing feel um, and looking at the triplet. Um, everyone should know the head of Cool Blues by Charlie Parker. I'll play it really slow uh, right here. <laughs> And this is perfect because it starts off with a triplet. So you play one la li, and then the second one, two la li, right? Let's just look at the first lick there in the um, in the melody. So it's going to go one la li, two la li, three la li, four la li. So you should see in that line, everything... Is, is 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 being divided by the triplet. Okay. Okay, and the next thing I want to point out is just the fact that the faster you start to play your lines, the more naturally the eighth notes are going to start to even out. Um, and that's just a consequence of playing at faster tempos. Which kind of brings me to my final point, and it's just that, um, you know, now in contemporary times, jazz guitar is kind of changing. You know, we've been through the fusion thing and the bebop thing, ECM thing, etc. And so a lot of people, including myself, are playing a lot more even eighth notes. Um, I think a lot of people sort of accent a lot less heavier nowadays. Um, and if you want to play like that, it's totally fine, you know. But make sure you're playing like that, um, you know, based on a decision that you're making, not on ignorance of the aesthetics of swing music. Um, <clears throat> and finally, I guess the, the last thing I have to say, which is the most important, is that really none of this matters, you know, thinking about... Um, your lines in any of these particular ways. The only thing that matters is that you transcribe and that you feel it under your fingers from a teacher. And your teacher should be somebody on record. I would say Wes Montgomery. <laughs> ¶¶